Welcome back, blade lovers. Beware, we have a monkey thumper in the studio today. Visiting from Fox Knives. And this is an interesting and unusual karambit-like knife that serves utility functions as well. And uh, this is a design by Blackrock Knives, a maker I'm becoming more and more familiar with, Ken Vahikate, who owns Blackrock Knives. He makes custom knives, and this is a Fox production version of one of his custom designs. Now, it's not a large knife. Yes, it's a fixed blade. And for the, those of you that aren't big fixed blade appreciators, uh, check it out anyway. You may find something here that you like. Ken likes to use this uh, texture, um, kind of a carved uh, ground design on his handles, but he also, for his customs, runs it all along the blade line. <clears throat> Some of his knives are ground on one side only, are chisel ground, and some are ground on both. I suspect the original on this uh, was ground on both sides, I'm pretty sure. I have to thank Bob DeMarco of the Knife Junkie channel for introducing me to Ken's work because uh, he has a custom version of this. I'm very envious. Uh, and I got in touch with Ken, uh, posted some photos for him, uh, some of his uh, his work, and did pick up a custom knife that I'll show you in a minute that I've already done a review on. So um, Fox makes their knives. There's two two uh, Black Rock Customs knives that I'm aware of that Fox has brought to market. Uh, along with this one, there is also one called the Ryu, which is a traditional Tonto style blade. And they're both from Niolox steel. And I'm going to see if I can read you something quickly from uh, Knife Steel Compositions. That's an app that's uh, great for both Android and for uh, iOS, I believe. So Niolox, there's Niolox and Niolox Plus, but basically it's a stain resistant tool steel with good edge holding and decent toughness. It contains niobium, one of the best carbide formers, although there is not a lot of it in the alloy. Uh, in knives, typical working hardness range is 58 to 63, even without powder, uh, powder, met what do they call it? <laughs> PM <laughs> technology. Um, it is a very fine grain steel, which obviously is positive and aids with edge stability. Strangely enough, it's not an expensive alloy and not very popular with knife makers, mainly used by German, French, and Belgian knife makers. Okay, that was a bit long, but I wanted to give you a little background on the steel. Um, I found on another knife with Niolox that uh, it seems to hold a good edge and it comes through from Fox with a extremely good edge. We're going to do some quick dimensions on this. This is not a large knife. We have an overall of, we're going to call it eight inches to the pommel, to that point. And um, the blade itself is about three and three quarters to the handle with a cutting edge of uh, about 3.4 inches. As far as um, other dimensions go, the handle is 0.66. Got some fairly good girth to it. And the blade thickness is 3.7 millimeters. Now, I don't know how this compares with the original since I don't have it. Maybe one day I'll borrow Bob's. Let's fire up the old scale here and see what we get for the knife only. And we're getting 5.18 ounces. As I say, it's not particularly large. It's not particularly heavy. 
so the cool thing about this knife is you can hold it as a conventional um, almost a Skinner style blade with um, kind of a large well it's a drop point right with a uh, clip at the top a little bit reminiscent of a fat Bowie high grind as you can see it's a flat grind it is stone washed has some very effective very grabby jimping widely spaced micarta green micarta natural uh, handle ring at the end so here we come to the interesting part can be held in karambit fashion with the edge facing out but rather than having a hook you have the belly which can still be effectively used holding it in um, point forward let me see if I can get back just a little bit more holding it this way we have a very conventional knife that can be held in kind of a saber grip cutting thrusting you can choke forward there's a swale for the thumb way ahead of where the jimping is so you can hold it back there you can reach out here and uh, quite nice you can put your pinky in the ring and you'll come back a little ways and have your thumb on the jimping there now whether or not you like to do that personally I find it kind of awkward to put the finger in there but maybe it's not that maybe it's not that bad obviously here index finger for holding it this way however there's plenty of room and the way this is angled you can place your thumb and lock it on the top if you don't want to utilize the ring at all now it does come with an excellent kydex sheath with uh, no tech lock but you have your scout style loops on the back so it'll run on your belt that way and carry it horizontally also what you can do is remove one of the two loops and run this up so that it points upward and do it inside the waistband type carry both should work very very well I don't think they're one-way snaps but that's okay they snap down pretty hard nonetheless um, Kydex seems, seems to be of uh, moderate thickness a little bit of rattle sometimes though it's a challenge when you have knives that have a big curve to them like that to get them to fit perfectly in the sheath. There are ways to tighten sheaths up using a heat gun, but uh, I don't know that for me that I would really need it with this. If I had to sneak up on somebody or game or what have you and it was making that noise, I might be concerned. Nonetheless, you have a good Kydex sheath. Let's do some comparisons to the first Blackrock design that I had discovered. This is the Ryu, and this is the traditional style Tonto, not the American chisel point Tonto. It's a um, solid heavy knife, also from Nihilox steel, also with the same kind of finish. And again, this is a Blackrock design knife. Now you'll notice this also has that heavy texturing on the handle. Now if we bring out a custom Blackrock knife, this is the virus, see the uh, biological hazard symbol that Ken has put on this. This is a custom made by hand by Ken and you'll notice Coming out of his shop, the blade has that same texturing that the handle does. This one is chisel ground, so flat on one side, and you got your grind on the other. And you can see that it's a very unique texturing that he puts on each blade, each handle.
end blade. And he runs it right out there, even kind of between the, the main grind and the swedge. Just a real cool, interesting knife. And this one is designed to be used in the Pical point down edge in method, very similar to the Elvia that El Ca uh, Ed Calderon has uh, devised and has seen many copies. Kind of a cool sheath on this too, camo, urban camo sheath. And Ken hand makes all of his Kydex really, really nice. Let's go with, uh, let's get the Ryu out of the way and do a quick comparison with a perhaps commonly known fixed blade. That's the Street Beat by Spiderco, designed by Fred Perrin. You see that's a little bit smaller, but not by much, maybe an inch overall. Certainly the uh, Monkey Thumper has a much taller blade. And um, just comparing to commonly known folding knife, there you have the Griptilian, and they got about the same size knife overall. And a uh, little shorter blade. So this is the Monkey Thumper, and um, it's less specialized than you would think because you do have that conventional use and it holds very well. You can completely ignore the ring. You've got a sort of a skull crusher pommel there, glass breaker off on an angle. Plenty of room in your, uh, for your finger in the ring, as it should be. These should never be tight. Handle would appear to be removable with uh, what looks like Torx 8. So I'm um, not sure, well with Fox, it's not going to be glued on. With um, the custom knife, you can see that it's uh, glued and pinned. Not going to come off. But with this, I haven't tried, but uh, you should be able to remove those scales. You got kind of a crowned spine on the tang. And that moves into kind of a crowned spine on the jimping. And then it flattens out here in that swedge. But uh, not a large knife to carry around. You might even be able to pocket carry this. I don't see why not. Should come straight out. Thumb off the sheath. Let's give it the thumb off test. Oh yeah. No problem whatsoever. And yet it's got a good hold. So folks, that is a recent acquisition. I um, want to thank White Mountain Knives for sending this along, and I'll put a link in the description. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. We'll be back with you soon.